Uh, I figured this would be a good project. I keep talking about you ask, uh, basically you ask 10 pattern makers how to build one pattern. You're more than likely to get 10 different answers. It's kind of what this video is about. It's the possibilities for one particular pattern to be made multiple ways and deciding which would be the best for a particular circumstance. So this is what the casting would look like that I'm going to use as a sample. It's just a mock-up. Uh, some of you may recognize it. It's basically a uh, roughed out version of the Tally Ho project that uh, Wendy Hill Foundry did. Um, I'm going to get into the different possibilities and the way to make just this one part. Uh, there's a lot. And it all starts with a simple layout and then you start making your decisions working with the foundry and yourself in the pattern shop however you want to deal with it. Uh, if you're the builder or if you're the foreman in the pattern shop you deal with the foundry to decide what is the best means of production for making this casting. So this is what the casting would look like. And this is one way to build the pattern. If you notice I got cope and drag reverse from what was there. So the black is all obviously casting. This would be the open face uh, the way it is currently. This is a dome face here. Again, this is a casting, casting here, core for the center and a ring core on the outside. So I'm going to get into talking about different ways you could make this particular pattern or the way, not even or, but the way it was made originally. I'm not saying one way is right or wrong. What I am saying is there are multiple ways to build one particular pattern. So let's uh, take a look at the different ways to build this and we'll go from there. Does it require two core boxes or more? Does it require two cores, one core, or several cores? That will be determined by the foundry and the pattern maker. Mainly the foundry. It's what they need to get a good casting. So let's get into this and we'll see what we got. Uh, let's uh, get my layout out here. Of course it's done on the whiteboard again. This is basically the way it's made currently. So this scope side, this is a drag side, and that's the way I saw it initially. It turns out that that's the way it was made and it worked. I guess I, th I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I did hear that they do have a good casting now. That's a disclaimer. I don't know for sure, so don't quote me on it. So what they did is they uh, built a pattern. Um, this was a core box similar to this one, except it was a segmented box and parted differently. So this is a core box similar to what I would have made initially if I was going to put the outside core in. Um, there's ways you can uh, make this better as far as getting it out. It uh, didn't look like a huge casting or pattern. Uh, to get this out you could put three draw bars in here. A draw bar is nothing more than you put a washer here. You have a bolt coming up to an eye bolt here, a uh, nut either side to lock it in place, and put it about three places, maybe four, around the core. Lift the core out in a way that um, you basically pick the core up and you can set it right directly in the mold, unless you got to do something to it. Uh, Windy Hill Foundry. Um, bakes their cores which is fine. 
Uh, some foundries use an air set sand. They don't bake it. It basically goes after it's cured. goes right into the mold. So you got a uh, eye bolt you can put in here. Draw bar and lift the thing out. And then you just top of the top of the core up here would be right about even with that. You would cut the sand out of here. Lift it out with that, and then you'd fill this back in with sand. Um, just to make it so if metal does get in there, it's not part of the pattern or casting. So that's one way to do it. Uh, the original pattern had six segments around it. You could do it in one. That's another way to do it. Uh, my thought was to do it this way. I would have reverse cope and drag. I would have, um, let's see if I got a pen here. So for me, I would have reversed cope and drag and put the draft in like so. And this would now become the drag. Let's see if I can write this backwards. Yeah, kind of, sort of. That becomes a drag. This is a cope, of course. Not going to try and write that one. But that way, if this uh, this piece here was all one piece, your parting line for the way I'd make it this way would be here. That would be your parting line. That would all be rammed up. You don't have a a cheek in it. It's all rammed up in one piece so your parting lines there. This area is all the drag going through all this. This is area up here is a cope. Everything is done. Not an issue. Uh, that's another way to build it. I would have preferred for the way I do things to reverse cope and drag. And like I say, there's a lot of other ways. So, let's look at another way to build this thing. And that is, you can still use this one here, just like it is. So another way you could do it is you build another core. And so you got another core coming out here. Core print is here. And... Yeah, about like so. Okay, core print is there. Same kind of thing. Um, you can, uh, now that you got that made up, and you can now, this would still be the drag. So this, uh, let's do it this way. Drag is that way. Cope is here. Okay, your parting line is still up here. So you got a, a deep drag and a shallow cope, shallower cope. Um, you can also do this a different way where if you don't like that, you want to keep the cope and drag somewhat equal. You can part that right there and make this the parting line. And you'd reverse the draft here. So from there to there, you'd have a split pattern like that. Parting lines there. Uh, core would still be the same, except this would be this part here. This would be the loose piece. Okay, and that would be drafted that way. So everything's going to come out that way. The loose piece would come out first. And you do it, lift it out. Uh, I didn't really like that, but it's a possibility. Um, the reason I didn't like it is uh, you're just making the job a bit more complicated. You still got, if you got a core here, you can split it this way on the outside ring. But what if you don't want to use the outside ring? 
Now the reason I brought this beyond here is what you'd do is you'd take and push nails in to the mold. So you'd have a nail coming down this way and that would hold this core, keep it from floating. It does work. I've seen it done before many times. But what if you didn't want to use this core? What if you you didn't have a flask big enough? So you could get away with getting rid of this core. And well, it's still the drag, but get rid of this core. You don't want this core at all. Is there a way that you could make this pattern by not using any cores? Yes, there is. And that is you use a cheek. And what Clark did is, if you want to use a cheek, come out this way. That would be the parting line. This is a drag. Uh, I keep writing it backwards. This is a drag. Okay. That's a cope. We'll put a P here. So we know that's a cope. And this is a cheek. Okay, so that's your cheek. The cheek would be split here. So this would come out with the cope. This would come out, but you got a problem. This side is okay because this is, and this would be fixed. So everything up to here would be solid, but you cannot pull this out because you have this little lip over the top. So you can't just pull it out of the cheek or pull the, the pattern out with the cheek there. You can't separate them, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So what you can do is you build a parting here, just at the base of the fillet. So this is where the pattern is split at this point. And this is where the parting line is for the cheek to cope. So everything from here will draw that way. This part of the pattern from here, here to here, will also draw that way. You know, you'll probably end up pulling the coat mold off and then you pull this out of the cheek. And then the cheek can lift off of this. And the cheek would lift out that way. Drag stays in position. You never have to touch a drag again once it's rammed up and rolled over. Um, <clears throat> that works really good, except you got one problem. Uh, you're going to have to make a either a ring, which means that ring would have to be drafted here. I don't know if you got enough material, because this is just a mock-up I did. I don't know if you got enough material here. So what you could do is you add this core back into it, and I'd still put it out here. So you add this core back in. Okay, about like so. You add that core back in. And now this is all solid, so you can bring this parting all the way over to here. So now this is a cope side here, cope, and this is a drag side. Okay, so and you don't need this at all here. That wouldn't do so. Now you've eliminated using a cheek, you've eliminated this outside core entirely. So now the mold size is reduced in size. You make one core that involves this thing and that core would look something like this. So now you got the core. It's the uh, same as the inside of this pattern. So you got the core, but because you got reverse draft here, you have to make a loose ring like this. So you ram the core up with the ring on it, take the ring off, or actually what I'd do for me, 
I'd ram it up like this all the way to the top of the ring. Flip the entire core over, rest it on the ring, and lift this part of the, the core print or core box off, leaving the ring like that. And then you do like I did before, you put a couple of um, lifting eyes in there. And then you just dress up the lifting eyes in this area when you make that part of the mold. It makes it quick, simple, you're using a cheek as to what the foundry needs are to actually get a good casting. Uh, you may ask about risering because the foundry had a riser here because this was a cope. And, uh, risers there. I hate writing backwards. Um, you could eliminate that riser. Uh, they got what they call a uh, chill. It's basically, since this is an iron casting, you can use a piece of steel or a piece of iron that's flat and that chill is rammed up in the mold so it would be drafted like this in here. And if you make your core print deep enough here, you can actually put it in the core print itself and it wouldn't be a big deal. Um, everything would work just fine. Um, the chill you could then if you need to either add a riser here which would be hard to cut off or you could add what we called a uh, riser here it's a knockoff core would be here and that way and then the riser would be here and the nice part about that is if you just uh, Depending on the size of the riser, you either cut it off because you got a nice witness line there, or if it's small enough and you got enough room to do it, you can smack it with a sledgehammer and break it off. That would be up to the foundry how they want to do it, but that would give you enough riser material, two of those, one on each side where the this added uh, boss or lug was. So those are different ways you could build it. Um, which one's best? I won't say I know how I would do it which would probably be more along the lines of this but before I did anything to build the pattern I would check with the foundry and say is this acceptable and tell them what I, my plans were and we would make adjustments from there if they wanted it done a different way if they wanted to change cope and drag of course plans change so that's about it I think um, let me know what you guys think. If you got any other suggestions as to what you would like to see done, let me know and uh, we'll go on from there. So that's, uh, that's about it for this video, I think. It didn't take as long as I thought it would. Okay, you guys have a good day and we'll talk at you later. Bye.